Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here with PressureWashingSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, I want to talk to you today a little bit about surface cleaner nozzles. Had a couple of questions about these in the last couple of weeks. So uh, just kind of want to go over that and maybe explain a few things that will help you in determining what size you need. So that's coming up next. Okay guys, so this is a standard uh, nozzle chart, uh, very easy to read. There's many of these out there that you can get online. You can just Google um, pressure washing nozzle chart. Uh, that'd be the easiest thing to search and these should come up. There's all kinds of nozzle charts out there for various different types of machinery, um, but you wanna get one like this that's, that's got your PSI at the top and your gallon per minute uh, over to the side and doesn't have so much uh, junk to it. Just something very basic. So these are all the orifice sizes um, that, we, that you would use according to the PSI and the gallon per minute of your machine. So when we're cleaning concrete, we want to stay within the 2,500 to 3,000 PSI of what's coming out of our nozzles. This doesn't mean that your machine needs to be 3,000 PSI or 2,500 PSI. This is the pressure that we're trying to get based off of the nozzle size that we're using. So let's take, for instance, I have an 8-gallon per minute machine. So that's 8-gallon per minute right there. If you can see it better with my finger. So that's eight gallon per minute. And let's say I want to maintain 2,500 PSI coming out of my nozzles on my surface cleaner. So that tells me I need a 10.0 nozzle. So if I have a two nozzle bar, a bar on my surface cleaner that has two nozzles, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to divide it by two and I'm going to use a 2505 nozzle. I'm going to use two of them, two 2502 nozzles. Uh, I mean, 2505 nozzles, 2505. This gets real confusing because of all the numbers, um, but that's what I would want to use uh, because I'm splitting that 10.0 nozzle size into two nozzles. So, 2.2505 is going to get me my 25 or my 10.0 uh, size. So if I have a four nozzle bar, I want to take that 10.0 orifice size, the same one, and I'm simply going to divide it into four because I'm dispersing that water out of four different nozzles. So if you divide that by four, then you've got 25025, which is going to be a smaller orifice size, but you've got four of them now. Let's see if I can find it. There it is, 25025. So that would be four 25025 nozzles, okay? So if you've got, uh, if you want more pressure, then it tells you you need 9.0. So you divide that by two, that's going to probably be about 25.0, uh, probably going to stick with the same thing, 25.05. You might want to try 25.055, okay? Now, when you go to, I'm sorry, you would go up 25.045, okay? So 9.0, that would be 25.045, okay? So that's giving you more pressure. If you wanted two, if you wanted 2,000 psi on an eight-gallon-per-minute machine, then you're going to split this 12, and you would go to two 2506s, or if it's a four-nozzle bar, four 2503s. All right. I hope this is making sense, and I'm not making it too confusing. Too confusing. Um, so let's say you have a four gallon per minute machine and you want to keep with this 2,500 PSI, that calls for a 5.0 nozzle size, 
which was the same down here when we split it into two. But now we're going to take this 5.0 nozzle size for the 4 gallon per minute to maintain 2500 PSI. We're going to divide that by 2 and that's 25025 because it's 2.5, 2.5, 2, and a half, two, and a half, two and a half equals 5. So that's kind of how you want to look at it. Okay. So let's say on this 4 gallon per minute machine that you're going to go and do a pool deck and maybe you only want 2,000 PSI, okay? So that's calling for five and a half. So you're going to divide that in half, and you're going to get the nozzle size that's closest to that. You're going to divide that by two if it's a two nozzle bar. 1,500 PSI would be six and a half. So you may have to go with two 2503s or two 2503s somewhere in that area. So Whatever these are, if your go-to nozzle and you're wanting to keep it 2,500 PSI and you have 5.0, that's 25025. So I would suggest you always have on hand two 2503s and two 2503.5s so you can change them for when you want less PSI depending on the surface that you're cleaning. Okay guys, real quick, uh, before I get into the video again, don't forget coming up in August, I believe it's August 12th and 13th is our next hands-on training right here in Houston, Texas. And then also we have them in September, October, November, throughout the rest of the year. So uh, if you're interested in getting your business started off on the right foot, then uh, check out the hands-on training we have here every month for the last 13 years right here in Houston, Texas. And then also, if you can't make it out here, then check out the online video school. Um, I tell everybody that's your absolute best value for training um, that I offer because there's just so much content on there. We have a lot of guys that do both. They'll actually come here for the two day and then they purchase the online as well. But either way, I promise you, it'll help you drastically cut your learning curve if you're starting a new business and you need the training, um, it's just got so much content on it. It's broken down in the first parts by house washing, roof cleaning, uh, property protection, as well as concrete and hardscape cleaning. And then there's tests that you can take after each four of those modules. And then there's just a ton of other stuff on there to help you with everything that you would need for starting your business. So that's the online video school. If you're wanting to come to Houston, check out pressurewashingschool.com slash events. And then also on the website, there's information about the online video school. In fact, we just did, we redid the website. Uh, so it's easier to navigate. Uh, check out the frequently asked question page. We have a lot of people that email us wanting to know about the school. If you'll hit that link and check out that FAQ page, it'll give you a ton of information about what goes on with all of our training opportunities. Uh, if you've ever been into our store, you'll see we have the fan tip nozzles all in a row here. These are for surface cleaners, 2502, 2525, uh, 2503, 2535, on and on and on it goes all the way down to uh, 2506 and we even, even have a 4,000 uh, or a 40 degree angle. So this 25 degree, this 25 number at the beginning is telling you the spray pattern. So it's going to be a spray pattern like that. Whereas a 40 degree pattern is going to be a lot wider. Okay. And some guys like to use those. I rarely have ever used a 40 degree. I've always either used 25. Sometimes I've actually used 15, depending on the size of the surface cleaner. But these 35, 303, 025, 02, a lot of guys used to think, and myself included, that these meant the gallons per minute that's going to come out. That's not correct. That's your orifice size. So you just want to make sure that you look at your chart and you find the PSI that you want, eight gallon per minute, that calls for a 10.0 orifice size, so I'm dividing that into two, and that's two 2505s.
a lot of times guys, uh, especially on the like the BE 24 inch uh, and 30 inch surface cleaners, you'll have three nozzles. Um, so you're basically just going to take this number uh, on the eight gallon per minute at 2,500 PSI, that's 10.0. So you're gonna divide that by three and you're gonna come up with kind of an odd number so you just divide that by three and then round it up or down depending on your preference to what you need. So 2503 would be good and also have 2503 um, for that. So it's just a matter of dividing this number, this orifice size into the number of nozzles that you're using based on the gallon per minute that you're using. So. A lot of guys use a five gallon per minute machine. So we come over to 2,500 PSI. That calls for a six and a half. So again, two 2503s or 25035 is what you could get by with, okay? I hope that hasn't been too confusing, but we get a lot of questions about these. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of clarify a little bit what you need to do. Um, of course, the easiest way would be to use one of our surface cleaner pressure regulators. Uh, that's something Craig Harrison from F9 came out with a long time ago. And uh, we have the parts available for that. And uh, that allows you, so when I, because I have the pressure surface cleaner regulator on my surface cleaners, I stick with the 250, uh, 25 nozzles and that puts my gauge right at 2,500 PSI. And so I never have to change my nozzles out if I go to a softer uh, surface, like a pool deck or, you know, whatever, uh, freshly laid concrete that's, you know, three or four or five months old and I don't want to tear the cream off. I can adjust my pressure down as low as I need to without having to change the nozzles. So. Um, two different ways you can achieve getting lower pressure is by changing your nozzles. Again, have those two nozzles um, that are going to get you less pressure always on your truck so that you can change those out or use the pressure regulator. Um, I don't suggest using a ball valve to lower your pressure. Uh, you can do it for, you know, to a little bit, but you got to be careful it's not going to bog your machine down when you do that. You guys, I wanna also let you know, there's two different size, thread size nozzles that we carry. One is the quarter inch, and another is the one eighth inch. So the one eighth inch is of course smaller than the quarter inch, and we've had in the past some guys that will order eighth inch, thinking that's the size they need. So you really need to know what size thread you need. Um, most popular thread size is quarter inch, but there are some smaller surface cleaners and certain brand surface cleaners, especially if you get something off of Amazon or whatever, um, that will have these smaller one eighth inch threaded nozzles. And so we actually, when we see somebody order eight inch nozzles, we'll give them a call and verify but you want to make sure that, you know, when you're on our website and you stumble across these eighth inch nozzles, don't just think that's the size that you need. Make sure you verify that you need quarter inch or you need one eighth size nozzles. The other thing is these will get clogged normally with a little piece of sand or a little piece of grit from a driveway that can happen. So you can use a high pressure filter to help eliminate some of that. Um, but it's always a good idea to have one of these uh, welder's tip cleaning tools. I'm trying to get it open with one hand. They come in different size little rods, if you will, that you can use to poke through to get the sand out. Um, I use mostly a dental pick set. Um, because it has a nice strong pointed end on them. And you always want to try to push your sand back through the way it came in. So don't go in from this side and try to push it through the nozzle. 
go through the top and push down back through it and then just give it the old sky test or light test and take a look up through it make sure it's clear to blow through both ends a couple of times make sure you're getting good air coming out of it you could also use an air uh, air compressor to blow these out if you wanted to but i've just found it's much quicker to um, use one of those two tools dental pick set or welder's cleaning tip tool you can get these at home depot or lowe's um, and that'll that'll work for you just fine and then like i said just look up through the sky and make sure that you have good light going through the whole thing and it's not blocked um, and that'll help you uh, make sure that it's cleaned out and then we always keep spares guys i mean you've got to have spare nozzles because the last thing you want to do when you get a clogged nozzle on a job and you'll know because the the uh, disc the surface cleaner round disc part will start vibrating and sometimes it'll leave swirl marks or, or it's not cleaning properly um, have extra nozzles and just take the nozzle out and replace it and throw this into a little bag we have a little baggie on ours that we put clog nozzles in and when we're doing maintenance work and stuff we'll go through and unclog all of them at one time because sometimes it can take a few minutes to try to get these unclogged and that's just downtime on a job so take it out replace the nozzle um, and get back to work okay guys i hope this has been helpful for you guys um, trying to choose your surface cleaner and nozzles if you have any questions just be sure to uh, hit me down in the comments below or you can email me at the store info at dougruckerstore.com and be sure to hit the like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff if this stuff is being helpful to you. And then if you have any questions about our training events, then email me at pressurecleaningschool at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope everybody is having a blessed, busy season and uh, making some good money. And uh, if we can help in any way, just let us know. And y'all have a very, very blessed day.